Hello everybody, Dr. Rick Wallace dropping in on you. Uh, hope everybody is having an unbelievable weekend. <coughs> Look, I'm going to do the best I can to get through this as quickly as possible. Just something I read in the news and I thought that it would be a good teaching moment. Before I do, I want to remind everybody that we are in the midst of a fundraiser. Uh, while we need support for all the work we do we, at the Odyssey Project, which includes uh, Restoring Ghetto's Forgotten Daughters, Black Men, Lead, uh, the Music is Life program, a Black Empowerment uh, Initiative, and more. Uh, not, not to mention the most important element and component of the uh, Odyssey Project, which is our research uh, center. Uh, which obviously, you know, doesn't get a lot of spark, but we learn and we develop and, uh, and accumulate and process data through this research center, which I had, obviously, and it's important. But right now we're doing a targeted uh, fundraiser specifically for Black Man Lead because we're seeing Black males struggle to live up to the demand of Black manhood and to uh, the capacity to assume the role of authentic Black manhood. And we think it's important to not only define manhood so that it's a universal understanding of what manhood is, but to provide the proper resources, training, and support for young Black males to walk into this uh, <clears throat> expectation. And right now we are seeing uh, the results of our failures to do so. And we have a proven method uh, that I have invested years and years and years of research and pro program development into creating. And we need to make this a national uh, network uh, where we are creating a universal understanding of black manhood, especially here in America, and what that looks like and what we need it to look like in order to strengthen our communities, uh, empower our communities, provide protection for our women and our children. It's immensely important uh, to do that, and we're asking for your support. Uh, the way that you can support us is listed right there in the description box. You can either click the link and do it, or you can give through the organization's uh, cash app handle. Uh, but whatever you do, it's immensely important that we gain support for this because we can talk until we're blue in the face. If we don't take action, we will not get results. We can't wish it. We can't. We can't scream and shout it. We can't throw temper temper tantrums. Protests are not going to do it. It's going to ultimately ball, ball down to what we are able and willing to do for ourselves. It doesn't mean that we don't make demands on those who uh, owe us. It simply means that we can't wait around for someone else to fix our problems. That has never been the formula for success. That's never been the formula for empowerment. And it is not going to be the formula for empowerment now. Now, on to the discussion, uh, which to me isn't a discussion, but I think it's important to sit up because it's, it's amazing that we're here and we're talking about this. Uh, in case you are on the rock, actor and performer uh, Jesse Smollett uh, was found guilty of falsifying information and filing a false claim of a hate crime and sentenced to, I think, 36 months of uh, probation, which included 150 days of actual jail time. Um had a bunch of stars come out on his behalf, a bunch of stars that stood up, that spoke out uh, after the sentencing and uh, demanding that he be released. And ultimately there was a hearing. And uh, after the hearing by uh, the Superior Court, they uh, ruled that he should be released on bond pending his appeal of his conviction. So he won't start serving his sentence until he has appealed his conviction and the conviction has been upheld. Okay, that's that part of it. The part I want to talk about, and if you don't remember, the dude made up some crazy story that was way off the wall that after hearing it a while, you start to go, okay, some stuff is not work, not happening here. You still go, okay, that don't make sense. And there's a bunch of little things that d didn't make sense. Like, for instance, somebody tried to put a noose around your neck and you still have it around your neck after getting away and filing a claim. Uh, just natural stuff that you don't do. Somebody has a noose around your neck. First thing you're going to do when you get clear is get that damn noose from around your neck. It's just a natural, instinctive thing that happens. But anyway, we, uh, what I want to get to is his brother now is, has been very vocal since his sentencing. 
and he has come out and basically went after the black community saying the black community uh, failed to show up and support his brother and that that lack of support left his brother vulnerable. Well, here's the thing. You got to be very careful. And, you, and one thing that we as black people are going to have to learn is when we're being gaslighted, even by our own, uh, are those who want to be. See, my thing is, number one is, for you to get black support, you got to be black all the time, as far as I'm concerned. Not just when it's convenient for you, not just when you need to claim it because it's beneficial to you. Because the whole thing was, even when this dude was claiming this whole hate crime, he wasn't claiming the hate crime because he was black. He didn't get attacked in his quote unquote assault because he was black. He was attacked because he was gay. So he identified more with being gay than he did being black. And we're not gonna get too much into that right now, but that's the first thing with me. If you're gonna come to the black community and say, we need to ride with you, the first thing is you gotta be black. And I don't mean just in complexion. I mean in your in your movements, in your mindset, in the way you operate, and in, in, in the way you represent. See, I've been unapologetically black my entire life. I've been black to the point of it being detrimental to my business. I'm black, I'm black first, I'm a black man. I know what it means to be a black man in America. I know what it feels like to have to work 10 times harder. I know all of that. So. I am unapologetically black. I don't bend to fit in. I don't bend to be accepted. So when I'm looking at a black male, that's the first thing I'm looking at. If you want me to ride with you this hard, tell me what you have given to us in order for me to feel that way about you. I'm gonna ride with you. I need to know where you're at and where you stand. First and foremost, that's just basic, basic at the core. Hey, tribalism. I'm, if you're a part of my tribe, show me how you've been riding with me and then you got my attention. Okay, that's the first thing. The second thing is, don't have me riding with you on some BS. Don't get me to put my credibility on the line to go to bat for you to come to find out you throwing out some bull crap, trying to get an edge that has nothing to do with me, won't benefit me or my people. This is solely about you and you getting leverage and pushing an agenda that has nothing to do with me. Okay, so the whole thing is, I'm gonna ride this gay thing, I'm gonna push this agenda, and, and, and so you're building a platform on your homosexuality and not your blackness. That's your prerogative. That's your thing. Do your thing. I believe everybody should have the right to live their lives the way they want to. Now, I don't necessarily believe, and I'm not going to ever sit up and say that it's a pro-social thing as far as blackness is concerned, but you got the right. Don't mean I'm going to back you on it. Don't mean I'm going to ride with you on it, but you got the right. I'm backing off it. I give you that. But what I am saying is how in the world do, does that have anything to do with me? I say you have a right to do what you want to, but I don't have to participate. And if I do participate, it's gonna be based off the logic. And again, I'm at a point in time in my life where yeah, I'll say what I believe is right, but I only have so much energy to invest in fighting and, and to stand and to wage war and to be heavily invested in anything. So it's gonna to have to make sense to me. It's gonna to have to have some benefit to me. I'm gonna give you, that's gotta be something I'm getting in return. Okay, but you decided that you're going to go out and you're going to make this thing up. Let's be real. He made it up. All right. He made it up so much and it was so out the way that even the gay community wasn't riding with him. You know, at first it was, oh, yeah, yeah. The gay community, whoa, whoa, whoa. Well, they start back. Have you ever seen that thing where everybody's talking about, yeah, 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 yeah. And then they realize what they're up against and you start seeing them slowly fade to the back. That's what happened with the gay community when they saw what was going on. Now, here's the crazy thing, though. If you go back, that's why I love keeping receipts and I go back and I review. That's the beautiful thing about being a researcher. You keep so much data that you can go back. You can you can pull up, you can look, you can see how you responded to something four years ago, five years ago, six years ago. You can sit up and see it. You can see how other people responded to it. But the crazy thing is this. Black people did ride. They rode hard in the beginning. And then they start seeing the BS uh, signals. The red flag start going, whoa, 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 whoa. And so, yeah, we start getting back because now, number one is, this doesn't even look like it happened. Number two is, you're not even saying that it happened because you were black. Now, we ready to ride with you because you're black. But then, you know, now we start to think, man, when have you ever been about anything black? Your whole thing is, you're, you're, you're repping your sexuality, which is, again, your prerogative. But what does that have to do with me? But be careful 
how they gaslight you because they all have set up, and, and that's the crazy thing. Black people are always blamed when stuff don't right. Democrats love to blame black people. When stuff, if blacks would have got out and voted, man, we make up 13 goddamn percent of the population. Excuse me. I don't I don't always do, but sometimes I'm just where I'm at. And yes, I cuss. I cuss regularly. I just don't normally do it on my channels uh, or when I'm uh, moving and operating publicly and definitely not professionally. But hey, it's one of those days. My whole thing is, you know, we sit up and we look at this whole thing, man, and it is absolutely BS. Don't come at me and tell me about something when you wasn't repping it in the beginning, first of all. Second of all, don't tell me we didn't ride with you when we rode hard with you until we saw that you were full of crap. And even though you were really repping the LGBTQ community, we still rode with you until it became obvious that this was a bunch of bull crap. Where, at what point are we obligated to put our credibility and our energy and our effort and our resources on the line to come fight for you for something that never happened to you, something you put yourself in, the, in a situation with? And all the people that are showing up and going to bat with them. I would love to see you show up for some of the things that are going on in the community that are verifiable, that are real, that need support. Taraji P. Henson and all this, you know, obviously I expect his sister and his brother to go for his back. That that's family. Family gonna ride with you. I get that. But but some of these uh and and who was it? It was somebody that had the audacity to use the term Emmett Till, to use the name Emmett Till in comparison to what happened here. First and foremost, Emmett Till lost his life in the most brutal, in the most brutal and heinous way you could ever imagine. His family was devastated by a loss that was irreversible and nobody paid for it. You're comparing that to something that at its best, if it was true, almost happened. Now, don't get me wrong. I am an expert in the field of psychology. I understand something almost happening can still traumatize you. I get that. There's a level of detriment. But the problem is you got a hard time proving to anybody that it happened. There's so much evidence that was presented at this trial that showed you manufactured it. Even the people who supposedly did it to you weren't white. They were black. And they sit up there and testified that you paid them to do it. There's a paper trail. All of these different things. And I'm the last person to jump on the side of the system. This isn't even about the system to me. This is about black people playing a game to win in something they want to win in and then using their blackness as a shield or their blackness as a motivation, a motivational tool to incite support on something that didn't, would never have benefited blacks anyway. If it would have gone over the way he thought it would have, it would have been a win for the LGBT community. They'd have got boosted. They'd have probably got some more hate crime legislation. It would have did anything for blacks. We have to start actually thinking from a more strategic perspective. We've got to get out of our emotion. We've got to learn how to move and operate in a way that uh, is accessing our capacity for critical thought, for analysis. Uh, we've got to be able to problem solve and resolve and, and be able to move. We need think tanks. We need think tanks on economics. We need think tanks on social uh, prosperity. We need think tanks on education. Uh, we need think tanks on family restoration. We need think tanks on, uh, you know, what's going on with housing and serial force displacement, things that I've written on extensively. We need think tanks in all these areas because they are out strategizing us, they're out maneuvering us, and they're moving at a rapid pace. We can't catch up using our emotions. So the whole thing is, when we look at this from a strategic perspective, there was no win in it for the black community, and we've got to start operating based off of wins. What kind of win am I getting out of it? You want me to come to the table for you. What am I getting out of it in return? Just to sit up and say I'm standing on the side of what I believe is right is no longer acceptable and it's no longer uh, sufficient. 
we need to have something that's tangible that we can sit up and count and say, hey, look, this is what we're going to get by doing this. That's what an ally is. An ally has an interest. An ally isn't just that, hey, man, I'm looking out for you. An ally, that's a friend. An ally says, somebody said, okay, I'm invested in this because this will benefit me in X, Y, Z. I can't afford to have you go down because if you go down, then this will happen to me. I need to lift you up so this will, and we have to be more strategic in doing that. But the, just the idea that, that, that his brother had the audacity to come up and actually sit up and say that we lacked uh, the ability to come support no, we rode with you in the beginning and we realized you were full of shit and we decided that we weren't riding with you anymore. It's that simple. I didn't wish you any bad luck, but my whole thing is you play a hand that you created. You literally created the hand and you played it and obviously you didn't think it through. Obviously you didn't go into a great enough detail to manufacture something that was a little bit more believable, something that could be uh, substantiated uh, and believed at a level that you wouldn't be so quickly and easily exposed. That's on you. I don't have to ride that train with you. Uh, and the thing is, what's crazy is you played the gay card, but nobody's calling out the gay community because they didn't ride with you. But the black people are always to blame. The Dems love to blame black people. When it, and I mean, we make up 13% of the population, but we are always the reason somebody didn't get elected and something didn't happen. I can, um, you know, I can do math. I can do math and I understand that there's no way that we, we, we are doing anything major on a, on a national level with the vote. We make up 13% of the population. We ain't even the largest minority. In it. That's Latinos. So how can we not as a majority how come how come we as not being a majority be expected to be the ones who put now in a close race where you know there's a very close and small percentage of a differential yeah maybe but my whole thing is since when am i obligated to you to vote your way just because i come out and vote doesn't mean i'm voting for you but that's just how much they take us for granted they don't even talk about who to vote for. They just say, come out and vote. Why? Because they know historically for the last 60 years, 90% of the vote goes to the Democratic Party, to the Democrats. 90% historically, that has not wavered. 90% of our vote is Democrat. So they just need to get us to the polls. And if, and if it's a chance that that 90% that is going to be what's necessary, they got it. They just sit up there and they, 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 they uh, play the game manipulation and they get you out there. Look, I'm going to end it here. But I just had to address that. That was crazy to me. Once again, I want to implore you to support the work we're doing. There's so much that we're doing. I'm so proud of the research that we've done over the last 20 plus years. I'm so proud of the work that we put out uh, in the form of books, in the form of videos, in the form of guides, in the form of help aids, uh, the programs like Black Man Lead, the program with my wife, uh, Restoring Ghetto's Forgotten Daughters, where we work with inner city girls who have been victims of domestic abuse, sexual abuse, sexual and human trafficking, and more. Uh, the Music is Life program, where we believe that every black child should be able to play at least one instrument. Uh, the uh, Black Community Empowerment, which is about strengthening the black family, uh, returning the man to the home, uh, and so much more. We need your support. On that note, I'm out of here. Uh, the way that you can support us is in the description box. Look in the description box, click the link, or give through our cash app account. On that note, I'm out of here. You guys have an unbelievable day.